This is the first of a series of videos I'm doing on strength and conditioning. This one's called Squat Variations with Two Legs. You're going to need some equipment. And here I've got two dumbbells. Each of them weighs 7.5 kilograms. They're cast iron. They've got removable plates and threaded bars. You're also going to need some exercise bands, light, medium, and heavy. So let's get right into it. First exercise is called the butt to heel squat. Make sure you go slow and keep a rhythm. This exercise requires a full range of motion. Keep your feet flat on the ground, bend your knees fully, extend your arms out in front of you at shoulder height, keep your eyes forward, butt down, back straight. This is the exact same exercise except now I've got both dumbbells in my hand so I've got 15 kilos. Again my heels are on the ground, my knees are fully bent and the weights are up against my shoulders but I'm holding them with my arms. So make sure you go very slow and control your movement. Make sure that you're precise in every action. Again from the side view you can see that my heels are on the ground, my knees are fully bent, the weights are around my shoulder height, eyes looking forward, butt down, back straight. The next exercise coming up is exactly the same except I'm adding a shoulder press so I'm getting some upper body work as well. And I'm going to balance the weight between my right and left foot so that my hips remain level. It's very important that at the top of the movement you keep the weights above your shoulders. The intensity and volume of the exercises in this video are to improve your strength endurance. That means you need high repetitions and medium weight. Your mobility should be a full range of motion. Balance and stability, do the exercises slow. And coordination, again, do the exercises slow. Make sure that you're creating straight lines. And always take care of your upper and lower back when doing these exercises. Very important. Because the glutes are the strongest muscle in the body, it also makes the hips the strongest hinge in the body. I'll discuss why this is important in just a moment. So looking at the joints in series, the ankle should be mobile. The knees should be stable. The hip should be mobile. The shoulder should be stable. And your spine should also be stable. So here's how having strong glute development helps you in badminton. It allows you to get low, which helps you to move fast and defend. It improves your viewing angle so you can see the opponent better. It allows you to jump high so that you can attack. And it also links to the spine for support. This next exercise is called the dumbbell clean and jerk, and these are the muscles that are involved in this movement. So hamstrings, the lower back and spinal erectors, quadriceps, the trapezius, the abs, obliques, and transverse abs, shoulder and scapular stabilizers, and the triceps, biceps, and forearms. So I'm going to show you where all these are located on the body. There's the hamstrings, lower back and spinal erectors, the quadriceps, the trapezius, abs, obliques and transverse abs, shoulder and scapular stabilizers, triceps and biceps, and forearms. So if you were to pick any exercise that you could do, this would be the all-time best because it's taking the weight from the lowest point and lifting it up to the highest point. So it involves uh, more muscle than any other exercise. And it keeps you super strong. This is called valgus knee. This is a common problem in a lot of athletes, especially young ones. You can see how I'm buckling my knees inwards. This is not a very stable position. I'm gonna show you a mode of exercise you can do in order to improve this. So you always want the knees to follow the toes. The muscle I'm pointing to here is called the gluteus medius, or the glute med. I'm going to put up a definition here and I'll just read it out to you. 
So the gluteus medius is an important muscle in walking, running, and single leg weight bearing because it prevents the opposite side of the pelvis from dropping during walking, running, and single leg weight bearing. So in the musculoskeletal diagram, you can see that I've circled the gluteus medius in black. The diagram is of the posterior view, so looking at someone from the back. So I'm just pointing out here that when the gluteus medius is activated, it helps to externally rotate that hip so it lines up your knee properly over your toe. All right, I'm just going to come over here and pick up an elastic band. And I'm going to show you some exercises you can do that are similar to the ones at the beginning, um, but that will improve that gluteus medius activation. So this is the heavy band. And I'm placing it uh, just around my knees, lower than the kneecaps. Make sure that the band is definitely lower than the kneecaps. The band will want to pull your knee inwards. And so that will fire the gluteus medius and it'll force your knee to move outwards. So I'm just showing here that the gluteus medius is firing on the other side as well because the band is wrapped around both knees. Make sure that when you do the exercise, keep the knees apart and resist the bands. So strength endurance should be done very slowly so that you can recruit the greatest number of motor units possible. So the next exercise I call the Elvis giving tribute to the great rock and roll legend. So you swing your knee in and out while you keep your foot fixed to the ground and make sure you do both sides. So this next exercise is called the dumbbell deadlift. So you want to keep your feet a little bit narrower. The dumbbell should be touching the ground and then stand upright at the top of the movement. So your feet should be flat on the ground. Your knees resist the elastic band. Your back should be straight, eyes should be forward, and again, working on that glute med activation. So the next exercise is called the band and dumbbell clean and jerk. Uh, in the transition, make sure that your dumbbells are turned in at around 45 degree angle, and also that your elbows are closer to your hip. That stabilizes your shoulder during the lift. So the sequence of muscle recruitment is as follows. So knees, hips, and lower back then shoulder, scapula, biceps, and forearms, and then triceps, shoulders, and forearms. So again, knees, hips, lower back, shoulder, scapula, biceps, forearms, triceps, shoulders, forearms. Again, the focus of this video is on strength endurance, so I'll just go over that one more time. So the weight should be a medium weight between 50 to 65% of your one repetition max. Your reps should be almost to exhaustion, you should be doing between three to four sets of each exercise. The range of motion should be full. The speed of the movements should be very slow. And the rest between sets should be around 50%. So that's it. If you like this video and you want to learn more, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.